you just mentioned UHD. Um, we've been talking about it now for a few years. Uh, it's been slow to take hold in terms of any uh, available content. Um, and of course, as it does take hold, we're talking, again, you mentioned watermarking, the need to start adding that under the new licensing terms. Is, is UHD now starting to happen around the globe? Are you seeing enough of it to say to your customers, look, it's not just a talking point, you've got to be ready for this? We are absolutely seeing operator preparation for, it, for Ultra. We have a number of customers who have already launched 4K and, and UHD services for at least a channel or two or an event or two. And to do that, you have to have a network capable and terminal devices capable and security that's capable of supporting it. I think uh, last time I counted, uh, we were we had 16 installs in queue of our, our, our ultra high def compliant product uh, for operators who had rollout plans. And in many cases, they don't have immediate broad plans. They they know they need to be prepared. But the last thing you want to do today is buy and, and install a million set top boxes that need to be changed tomorrow or the year after when you do have broad availability of content. So we see a lot of people making network infrastructure investments and, and doing things like chipset selections and, and starting to make content agreements that enable them to do it and certainly security is part of the story, as you said, watermarking and all of the other uh, movie lab guidelines that, that, that enable that or your safe harbor for delivering content in that format. So that client side watermarking, that to the extent that it's um, being supported in hardware, uh, it, are, are the chip makers getting into that, or, I mean, the, the, the support for your uh, watermarking technology, is that now being built into the um, chips? If, if, a, if a, a service provider says, I want a set box that, that has uh, watermarking support. It, it certainly is, is becoming the expectation for anybody in the silicon business who makes a 4K or ultra high def chipset that they have watermarking, and, and ours certainly, and, and in some cases others as well, uh, in the expectation that you need to make the, the the system ready for all the rules. So we're absolutely available off the shelf from a number of vendors. We've announced a handful, and, and there's certainly others that are that are in queue. And we'll we'll see that as a broad expectation for ultra high def silicon in the near future. I uh, I understand you you're uh, doing more in the vein of monitoring to kind of pick up on breaches or things that are happening. How does that work? I mean. Take, to take preventive action, uh, given the, the greater importance of uh, piracy yeah. than it once was. Well, you know, pir piracy's always been a problem, and there, there are still markets in the world where as much as half of content is said to be pirated. Uh, and what we find is that the, the vector for piracy has changed. The old school model was to hack uh, the smart card or to reverse engineer the set-top box in a way that you could replicate and clone set-top boxes, or to distribute uh, control words over the internet. Increasingly, though, the quality of bandwidth available to, to people, uh, to, to the bad guys, the pirates, if you like, has enabled them to turn it into a business. In fact, they've, in many cases, co-opted the term IPTV. Uh, and, and you could buy an IPTV service with a thousand TV channels, which is the hacked content from satellite and cable and, and telco providers in, in many markets. And you don't even know maybe you're buying an illegal... And perhaps not, or perhaps you're willing to, <laughs> you're willing to overlook it. But, and, but what we're finding is that it's pretty easy to point a camera at a TV screen, and you have enough bandwidth to upload a video session, and you might just put up a web page and surround it by Google AdWords and make a little bit of money that way, or you might have a subscription service uh, that, that allows you to, to, to monetize your service that way. Give me your credit card for five bucks a month, I'll give you channels. So how can you tell that's happening? So certainly you, 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 you look at the internet, uh, we browse it constantly, and there are a number of good services that, that do that as partners to us. Operators certainly report it as they find out that they've paid for the exclusive rights for cricket or soccer or another sport and that uh, it's being devalued and other uh, off of other platforms that have been paid for it. People get very, and, they, uh, and, the, and the rights owners themselves do a lot of that searching. And what we're able to do is actually apply a, a cloud-based artificial intelligence uh, technology to that to be able to identify the source and, uh, and, the, and prompt the, uh, the, the corrective actions to take to be able to, to uh, address that level of piracy. It's quite interesting study. Is there any way to take action in that vein when people are buying a, uh, 
a, a set top from somebody that that basically is 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 set up to take uh, purloin content. These so-called Cody boxes are uh, they seem to be gaining a lot of prominence now. It's a lot easier just to plug it in and bingo, you're off to the races. There, there, there certainly have been a, a number of uh, takedowns and, and, and raids, and it's a little bit of whack-a-mole. Uh, you, 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 you shut down one service and find another, and, and uh, the barrier to entry is, isn't high uh, to be able to set up one of these services. So the, the, it requires eternal vigilance to be able to identify those and, and do something about it. And it's not necessarily as buying a set-top box. It may be downloading an app uh, to uh, a consumer device that... Uh -huh.